right, this one's on the z-score formula. You use the z-score formula when, you're, when you have a data value and you want to get a z-score, or if you have a z-score and you want to get a data value, okay? That's the two times you use it. So I'm going to show you like a way to remember it, and we're probably going to do that, okay? So let's start out with what the z-score formula is. All right, I'm going to erase this here because I just told you it's about the z-score formula and I want to use all the space. But here's the z-score formula, okay? Uh, the z-score formula just says that the z-score for any given data value x is just the distance it is away from the mean divided by the standard deviation um, of the data set. That's all it is, which makes sense when you think about it. Because when you divide by standard deviation, it tells you how many standard deviations away you are. Like. <clears throat> The z-score is the number of standard deviations away from the mean. If you look at this, we know for this case here, we have, uh, this is still the chipmunk problem, so we start uh, with the acorns. We still have a mean of 24 and a standard deviation of 6. So you can see that if I go one standard deviation above the mean, up 6, my z-score is 1. If I'm two standard deviations up, my z-score is 2. So the z-score is the number of standard deviations away from the mean that the data value is. Okay, now, <clears throat> when you divide by something, it tells you how many things that is. Like, if you're 30 years old, and you want to know, I don't want to know how many years you are old, I want to know how many fives you are old. Well, you have to take 30 and divide by 5, and you're like, oh, I'm six of those things away. So when you divide by five, it tells you how many five something is. But if someone's like, no, I don't want to know how many, how many years you are. I don't know how many twos old you are. Well, take your age 30 and you divide by two, 15. It tells you that you're 15 twos away. It tells you the number of twos 30 is. So you want to know the number, like suppose I have a 27 and I'm curious as to how many threes that is. Well, if I divide by three, 27 divided by 3 is 9. I know that 9, that nine I'm sorry, I know that 3 of these go into here, so I know this is 9 of these. Okay? 27 is 9 threes. So think about that. You divide by it. And that totally makes sense. Suppose, like for this case, I want to know 36. I have a chipmunk that, ate, that could fit 36 acorns in their mouth. What's their z-score? Well, let's find the distance in acorns away from the mean. Well, the mean is 24. And um, that's cool. 36 minus 24 is 12 acorns. I'm trying to find the z-score. I don't want to know how many acorns away from the mean. That's not, that's not what I'm asking. I want the z-score. I want to know the number of standard deviations away from the mean. The standard deviation is 6. How do I find out how many sixes 12 is? Well, I know 12 is two sixes, but what's the operation? I divide by six, and it tells me that 12 is two sixes away, which means 36, which is 12 away, is two sixes away. Six is a standard deviation, which means 36 is two standard deviations away from the mean. Therefore, the z-score is two. So when you divide by that, here's your distance in whatever units. You divide by standard deviation, it tells you how many of those standard deviations you are away. Another great thing about the z-score is that this is in acorns, this is in acorns, and they divide and they're gone. Acorns divided by acorns is nothing. You have two. Your standard deviation is just two. Not two acorns, not two half acorns, not two squirrels, there's no units on standard deviations. It's the standardized, it's the measuring thing. You can measure apples to oranges. It's beautiful. Let's look at another calculation, just so you can see how it makes sense if you stand back and look at the formula. Ready? Here we go. Um, all right. Uh, let's see how, let's say, uh, a, a scroll that has eight to eight, could fit 18 acorns. Well, let's find the z using the formula. Um, 18 minus the mean, individual data minus the mean, 24. 18 minus 24 is negative 6. So it's 6 acorns below the mean. But I don't want to know acorns. I don't know how many standard deviations that is, how many sixes that is. Well, that's 1. I know I'm 6 acorns, but when I divide by standard deviation, it tells me negative 6 is just 1 standard deviation below the mean. I mean, there's 1 standard deviation. So I know that 18 is 1 standard deviation below the mean. 
Tell me how many stand. So you take, okay, you're this far away from the mean in those, how many standard deviations it is? Divide by the number of standard deviations. So that's the C-score formula. Okay? Now I can manipulate that algebraically. You can ignore this part of the video if you want, but if you like algebra, look what happens. When I multiply both sides by sigma, I end up with x minus mu on this side, these cancel out, equals z sigma. And then I add mu to both sides. And I get um, uh, z sigma plus mu equals x. And I can rewrite it like this. x equals z sigma plus mu. So, watch here. I'm going to write this up top. So that first formula is when you have data and you want z-score, you use that. You manipulate it when you have z-score and you want data. And you use this formula when you have z-score. And pretty much this also makes sense if you think about it. Suppose I know the z-score. Suppose someone's like, oh, you know, I have my squirrel z-score is 3. And I'm like, all right, I've got to figure that out. The z-score is 3, which means it must be 3 standard deviations above the mean, because that's what the z-score is. The formula makes sense. The value I'm looking for, the z-score is 3. 3 what? 3 standard deviations. 3 sixes above the mean 24. And it makes total sense. This many standard deviations above the mean is the data value I'm looking for. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 24, oh, that's a tough one. Uh, 8 and 4, oh, you get 30 and 12, 42. So I'm way up there, 42. The data value I'm looking for is 42. 42 goes with a z-score of 3. But doesn't that make sense? The z-score is the number of standard deviations above the mean. So if you know the z-score, multiply it by standard deviation, that many standard deviations above the mean. Let's try with one below the mean. Oh, I was really disappointed. I brought my squirrel, found out that it only had a z-score of negative one. Aw, shucks. Well, let's find out exactly how many acorns that is. You're telling me that the number of acorns that you had were um, one standard deviation, one six below the mean. Notice, oh, sorry, below the mean, the mean, which is, let's see, given in each one. 24. Notice what this is. I'm going to go down one standard deviation from the mean. So a z-score of negative 1. You just go down 6 from 24, it's 18. Let's see. Ooh, negative 1. So it makes sense. I have a z-score of 1.5, but I want to, I know the z-score is 1.5, but I want to find the actual number of acorns. Well, the number of acorns is 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. One and a half, six is nine above the mean, which is 24, 33, which makes sense. 33 is right between 30 and 36, would be one and a half acorns. So those are the two formulas you use to go from z to data value, from data value to z. So remember, when you're going from percentile to z or z to percent, you use your calculator. When you're going from z to data or data to z, you use these formulas which completes the flow chart. The first part is going from x over to z, and you know going this direction, okay, you use this formula, oops, not x equals, sorry. You use that the z-score is simply your distance in acorns divided by the standard deviation. But if you're going, if you have the z-score and you're looking for the data value, well, the data value you're looking for is this many standard deviations above the mean. We also have this other part of the z of the table that tells us to go from z to percentile. You use norm CDF. Z left, z right. And to go this way, you use inverse norm. Inverse norm. Norm. Inverse norm. Percentile in decimal. That right there is what I call the flow chart. We're going to do problems with it next time. I just wanted you to really understand this formula, the Z formula, manipulations of it. We're going to learn more later on, but if you have a data value trying to find a percentile, first you convert that data value to a Z using this formula. Once you have a Z, you just use norm CDF and it gives you the percent. 
If they give you a percent and they're asking for the number of acorns that correspond with that percent or some data that corresponds, well, you have to use inverse norm, put the percentile in, and out comes a Z. Make sure you put it in decimal. And once you have that Z, you just know that the data value you're looking for is that many standard deviations above the mean. So it's pretty cool. You can just follow this to go from here to here, follow on the top, to go from here to here, follow on the bottom. You can always remember to do that and just follow the steps. That, those steps will actually help you do the calculations. I just want you to really understand what those things mean. Hopefully that cleared up and you're not just randomly plugging stuff in. Um, best of luck. We're going to solve some problems using the flow chart and this diagram. We're going to use a diagram to kind of check to make sure they kind of make sense. All right? Have a good day.